with the enthusiast. How are you doing? Welcome back. I hope you're well and I hope you're having a great day. So today we're back on the racing green and um, I've had a bit of a motivational blip recently. Um, yeah, just really been struggling to get off my bum and get out here into the garage to get some stuff done. But there is lots and lots to do, lots of stuff now that just needs tidying up, cleaning and reassembling. You can see I've already got some bits here which I've started to put back together, uh, strip down, clean up, paint, etc. Things like the pedal box. I've got to run the brake pipes at the front all around the subframe and that sort of thing. So there's plenty to do. It's probably just not that exciting on video. So I'll probably dip in and dip out where we can. Now, I often get asked, so I thought I'd just put it on a video, what do I set my settings on on my MIG welder? So I use a Clark 135TE. It's pretty much done everything I need it to do on my classic minis whenever I've been restoring them. So the settings I use is wire speed about six to six and a half. I have it on minimum one, and that is for welding up panel work and anything like that probably up to about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 mil thickness in metal. Any thicker than that, then you probably need to go minimum setting two. So, but for just panel work, minimum setting one, wire speed about six to six and a half. And the gas I use is an Argon CO2 mix and I use these high pressure like mini mig bottles. I know these are not the cheapest way of doing it, but they are far more cost effective than the little mini mig bottles you get from Halfords. Uh, these tend to last me quite a long time. And if you're conservative with the gas, if you're welding indoors, you can be, um, you can get a good, at least an hour's continuous welding out of one of these bottles, which gets quite a lot done. So, like I say, in this week's episode, it is just gonna be bits and bobs and reassembling stuff. So I don't quite know what the content's gonna be. I'll catch up with you in a moment and uh, we'll see how we're getting on. Right, I remember one thing I did get asked by a subscriber was to show how this bottom dash pad goes in. I had actually fitted that, but I'm kind. I took it out again so I can show you. So obviously, um that's the lower dash rail now i'm not sure whether you're meant to be able to or not but the last couple of times i've done this on minis i've just put the switch gear in place and you can get the dash pad on with the switch gear there because it's a real pain once that dash pad's in to get everything connected up here and get these bolts tightened that hold the the console in with all the switches and get all the cables through and that so that's that ready to go it's just uh, we'll have to get the cabling out of the ray when we need to. Um, what actually holds it on then? So the main part that holds it on is this chrome trim at the back. Um, it has clips there. There's a clip on the end. And then it's the same on the other side. There's a couple of important bits to point out. Firstly, the there's clips at the bottom as well, either side. And this trim uh, folds over the metal work at the bottom. So you need to make sure you fold that over the bottom and then obviously tap the clip on. And then at the top of the dash rail, so over the back here, like I say, the chrome trim holds it in place, but also the trim again folds over. You need to fold that over the top of the dash rail all the way along. Uh, as you can see originally here this has got some glue on it i don't think we need to glue back on it's because it's been on there for donkey's years it pretty much holds everything in place uh, everything else yeah there's not much else that holds it so i'll get the camera set up and we'll get that fitted doesn't take long at all so like i say important bit is making sure you've got the material folded over the lip um, but just to start with like I say, don't know whether it's meant to be like this, but I just find with a bit of a wiggle, this will go on. There we go. So I don't know whether that is meant to go over the switches like that, but it does seem to go on pretty easily. Uh, so we've got a bit of trim at the bottom, which we need to fold over 
bottom of the parcel shelf and then just pull the clip on and then up the top fold out the material from the inside and make sure it's folded over and just by folding it over that actually holds that in place pretty nicely now I need to go around and do the other side This is probably not ideal conditions to be trying to fold over a bit of brittle plastic that's 30 odd years old because it's only about six degrees in the garage at the moment so that's quite hard um, so that's folded over top and bottom we just need the trim the chrome trim Now my chrome trim is not perfect, it's a bit scratched up and that, but it is what it is, isn't it? are still in place and that gentlemen and ladies is pretty much it let me just grab the camera up and i'll show you so there we go a few minutes to fit um like i say this chrome trim along the back you just pull it in it's got the clips on that kind of holds everything in place um and then underneath you can see the clip there but like underneath and on the top here you just got to make sure you fold the material over the back so there we go hope that was helpful Let's get on with some other jobs. Right, so a bit of a progress update. Um, I've got the column in now. Um, I actually remembered to order new shear bolts. When you're doing, if you're taking the column out, you do need to order the shear bolts for going up inside here. Either that or you need to get a bolt and space it out because the way that bracket's made, you actually need the shank on the shear bolt to be able to tighten it up it's a bit of a pain otherwise but i did actually remember to or i ordered them ages ago when i first very first started the rebuild got the pedal box in um it's all just pretty much finger tight at the moment because i'm got a feeling i might have to take this out again to get the sound deadening insulation up the back here which i don't have if anyone has got that piece of sound deadening in the original bit that goes up the toe board there please let me know because I need it um, what else so all the wiring's in now the only thing I would say my only little complaint about that loom is the little wires which go on the back of the on the side of the switches for the illumination of the lights it's like the insulation on them is too fat really really difficult to get them back through the holes but I did do obviously I need to get the speedo back in I'll be back on that in a moment um, I did have a subscriber request ages ago now it's from Kieran I think so Kieran was asking me which of the wires for the heater I said I'd let him let him know when I get this far 
So I am this far. I'm not going to put that heater in yet because it needs to be fully overhauled. But all the wires have homes now. So that's just the speedo wiring, which um, I'll do later. Everything else is plugged in now. So the only wires left, which must be the ones for the heater, there is a green wire with a spade connector on here. And that corresponds. It goes onto the off on and off switch at the back there. And then there is a bullet terminal. It's in black, it's an earth. And that goes onto the earth for the heater. So there is only actually two wires on the heater. The positive, which goes onto the switch and the earth on the back. But like I say, that heat is all gonna get overhauled. Everything else is run, wiring wise. Um, there are a, I can't remember where it is actually. There are some spare wires here. So we've got purple and white, no, sorry, purple, red and green, and green and white. Oh, I'm not sure what they're for. They might be for radio. Um, mm, yeah, I, I think I'll have to check. Let me know in the description or in the comments if you know, but I think they're probably for radio. Um, and I've got the speaker wires up here for the radio which run up that side of the car. So, uh, right, let me show you the Speedo next. So here is my Speedo out the car. Three instruments, obviously you've got the rev counter. That is correct for the racing green. It's got 80,000 miles on it. Um, these all worked okay, but where it's had a walnut dash in it, um, they've cut these bits of the Speedo here um, because you need to, that to fit the walnut dash. But aside from that, that's all working. Um, so I I want to put it back to original. So uh, I was looking around for a set of three speedos or three instruments. I've got a set here, but I've messed up a bit because it's got the gray trim on it. It should be black. So again, if anyone's got a black housing, they want to sell me, swap, whatever, uh, please let me know because I need to get that right. Um, but I needed, I needed to buy that one because this has been cut here, and two, I didn't have any of the bracketry in the background. This was all missing. So although this is a right state, I, I'll, I'll clean it all up. Um, it is a Nippon. It's a Nippon three-speed dash because they do do different ones. That one's a Nippon as well, so we should be all right. But I might strip all this down clean it all up, I'll probably swap the speedo heads over. Um, I, I might even swap it all over, I don't know. But these are quite expensive. I think I paid 100 quid for this, but they typically go for about 150. They are not cheap at all. So um, yeah, leave it with me, I'll get that done. I think next job I might do actually. Uh, we've got some bits done in the boot here. We've obviously run the battery cable and everything like that. Um, I might start sorting out the brake pipes. So I need the one across the front of the subframe. I need to put the compensator valve in. So I might do that next. Right then, I think um, I'm gonna give the heater matrix just a bit of a clean up and a bit of an overhaul check over. From memory, the fan was all working okay. It wasn't leaking. This does look like the matrix has been replaced. Um, there is a bit of like rusty watermark on the bottom there, but I have blown it through and it doesn't seem to be leaking at all. There's no evidence of leak. I think that's just where water's been sat in the bottom. Um, but I think it's a replacement because if you look at the foam around the outside, it's a, not put on very nicely. So I'll probably need to redo that. Um, rest of the car have just been, yeah, like I say, it just takes now. It's just bits and bobs all over the place. I've made up the brake pipes and run them. Um, it's always quite satisfying making brake pipes. I do enjoy it. Um, and yeah, like I say, everything just takes a long time because literally everything you do needs cleaning up, painting. There's some bits I want to get on with at the moment, but it's still just too cold. It's 7.8 degrees. Um, so like with cleaning this out, I'll probably give it a coat of satin black paint but it's too cold to be painting at the moment and i've just got bits everywhere that need cleaning up and putting back together 
don't know what to do about brakes at the moment. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm going to stay with 8.4 inch brakes, but I'm tempted to get a set of mini spares or mini sport four pot calipers. And I don't know whether to go like vented or just solid discs. Uh, and I'm not sure about the colour either, so it's going to have white wheels on it. It's a green car. Um, red calipers would probably look a bit leery on it. So, I don't know. I might just go with, like, gunmetal grey or something like that. Um, but let me know you, what you think. What should I do with the front brake setup? Or should I just keep it standard? Um, it is probably worth up do it, upgrading the brakes, because we reckon... If everything goes well with the engine, it's probably going to be knocking on for 70 brake horsepower. So I think that's it for me today. So just been fiddling around all over the place. Hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy the videos, it's your first time here, then please do consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, just thanks for watching again. Thanks for tuning back in. I'll catch you again on the next one.